Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about this parang setup. Um, what you see here is basically what I would consider to be my tropical weather um, cutting tool setup. And what it consists of is a prang. All the details will be in the link below. And a small sheath knife. Um, details also in below. Um, not a sponsored video. Um, purchase with my own money. Nobody's asking me to do this. And basically what it consists of is a prang, which I'll go into a little bit of detail about, but it's from a company called My Prang, and a Mora knife. The Mora knife I've decided to go for is the stainless steel um, version of it here. Um, the reason being in the tropics it's very humid and it's just one less thing to worry too much about. I mean you, you can get um, carbon steel versions of these of course, um, but the stainless steel one, though it's a little bit more difficult to sharpen, I think for the tropics um, is a much better addition to have uh, attached to a system like this. Um, the reason I have a parang and a knife and I put them on the same sheath like this is because whether you're taking a, a prang or a machete or, or something of that nature into the tropics with you, it becomes the main, um, your main tool. You know, you, you use it for pretty much everything, uh, constructing things, clearing jungle areas, um, preparing food and that kind of thing. But it is obviously a large blade. And even though the beauty of a blade, uh, one of the, the beauty of a prang like this is the sharp part of the blade is actually sort of from here onwards. This part of the blade here is actually not sharp at all. So you can, you can hold the prang right down here and do integrate type carving or food preparation and you've got a lot more control over the blade than what you would have if you were just holding the handle. But all of that being said, sometimes when you're just doing some fishing or something like that and you want to you know, cut some line or cut a little bit of cord, the less that you have to take a blade this size out of the sheath the better because every single time you take a blade this size out it has, you know, it's a dangerous item and getting cuts and scratches in the tropics is uh, not a good idea, they become infected easily, so a smaller knife is always recommended to take. Now, a lot of people say we'll take a like a small flick knife or a folding blade or a leatherman or something like that. I don't tend to like taking folding knives to the tropics because the mechanism that makes it sort of fold in on itself I tend to find holds a lot of moisture and it's incredibly difficult to to dry those things out and they just kind of get all gunky and sort of sandy after a while. So you really want something that's just a sort of small sheath knife. The beauty of something like uh, this Mora stainless steel knife is, apart from it being dirt cheap, um, it comes with a, a rock solid plastic sheath which isn't going to rot away, but the advantages of having something like uh, this Mora knife is, apart from them being really cheap, they come with these hard plastic sheaths, um, they've got drain holes at the bottom of them so this can be completely submerged in water and the water is going to run out of it and it's the perfect size of blade for preparing fish or food or doing small carving jobs um, cutting rope and that kind of thing and you, you don't have to take out your main your main blade because they're not particularly heavy or bulky it doesn't take up a lot of weight and so attaching it to the sheath of your main cutting tool like a prang or a machete um, isn't too much of a hassle in addition to this setup I might also probably add a sail needle and I'd probably just tape that to the back of this sheath 
which allows me to do repairs on tarps or clothing and things like that. And I know that the sail needle will always be there. As long as you use something decent like Gorilla or duct tape, even in the tropics, if you push it right on, it'll, it'll stay in place. And it may also be the case that you'd want to add something like a, a ferrocerian rod or a fire steel to this setup as well. And probably you want to, if you're going to carry um, cutting tools anywhere, you're going to have to have a means to maintain the cutting tools. You're going to have to have something to be able to sharpen them. So whether that be a small sharpening stone, or in my case, I think what I'll attach to this sheath, I'll add a small file to this, which I can just put through the web in there, and a small file which you can pick up in any hardware store, which will allow me to sharpen both of these blades. The only one addition, I think I'll, one modification that I'll make to, to this blade is, because it's the stainless steel version, and it's kind of rounded at the top, it doesn't strike a fire steel or a ferrocerian rod very well it takes a lot of work so I'll file this off in a more flat sort of um, grind so that it's able to sort of give off sparks a lot better I'm not really in favour of adding too many things to a, a setup like this you don't want to attach survival kits or compasses or any other sort of like paracord and things like that to something like this because eventually you're just going to get carried away with adding crap to your sheath and in reality all you really want is a tool that you know you you know that's your cutting tool so here's my two cutting items I'll have a means to sort of um, sharpen that tool and a canvas needle or a sail needle will be attached to the back of it purely because it's a t an item that weighs almost nothing and I just know it will always be attached to this but you have to be careful with these kind of things and I took a look at a lot of different kinds of um, machetes and prangs uh, that were on the market and the thing about machetes and prangs and things like that is there's so many kinds of them and they're all different lengths and sizes and weights um, and I've noticed that you get people who swear blind by a particular type of machete or parang for a particular type of country or environment and it doesn't really appear to be entirely the case I mean you can always follow the old fable that what are the locals using and whatever they're using is probably the best uh, tool for the job but that that's not actually always the case Sometimes the locals are just using what they have to hand, and it's usually something really cheap. If you are going into a jungled, a jungle type environment, and your main task for being there is to cut your way through the jungle, then what you want is a very long machete type blade. A very straight blade that's serrated all the way along and is quite large. So you can do nice big swings to cut your way through the forest, keeping yourself as far away as possible from all the prickly things and bitey things. And you want a blade that is as light as possible, so it might actually have a little bit of bend to it because it's very thin sort of steel, um, and all you're doing is using it as a, a slicing tool. If you're going to be in a camp a lot of the time though, and you're going to be doing things like constructing shelters, or just clearing an area for a camp, but then using it as a kind of tropical axe almost, then you're going to want a smaller blade. And you can get away with blades, you know, this big, you know, not very big at all. Um, and they're much more lightweight, and it's, it's a very practical type tool. You can use it for a lot of things. I kind of went for something in the middle, so I can't remember the exact size of this. I put, I'll, I'll find out and I'll put it in the link below, but I think it's something like 12 centimeters. This is actually quite a heavy parang. I went for a parang as opposed to a machete. Um, these are made in Malaysia. And the thing about these kind of um, blades is um, you can see they're, they're hand forged, hand pressed, so they're incredibly strong. And it's, I went for the slightly thicker blade 
I went for the, there's a much cheaper version of this where you can buy it where it's the exact same sort of blade. You get them in different sizes, you get a larger one, you get this one which is kind of in the middle and then you get a much smaller one. And you can get them with, basically it's just a plastic handle and they're incredibly cheap. This one is modified, so it has a, a wooden handle and has a type of a uh, the, the bladed handle goes into the handle a little way but unlike the plastic versions the blade is actually pinned so there's a pin going through the wood through the, the metal and then a brass um, collar has been put on it to give it that extra reinforcement um, because because it requires more work, it's obviously more expensive, um, and it's much it's a heavier blade. Some people, some some people would look at a blade like this, um, who are used to sort of travelling through the jungle or whatever, and think that's ah, too heavy. Um, I, I I want a much bigger sort of lighter blade, but I wasn't going to just one place. I plan on using this in multiple locations whether that be jungle environments or other semi-tropical environments where you'd be using a tool like this to do things like cut your way into bamboo which is a very hard material you know a very solid I think it's actually a grass but it's 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 very hard so it almost becomes a type of axe in that way and so you want something with a bit of weight so that you're not putting too much effort into it you're, you're, you're allowing the weight of the blade to do the effort for you um, you want a blade that you can cut coconuts with. You want something that you can use as a cutting tool, but you also want to be able to clear a jungle environment. Not for too long, because it is too heavy for that. Eventually your arms would get completely knackered, but it's large enough and long enough that you can do that for a fairly sustainable amount of time before you get too exhausted. Um, so, this is my tropical tool of choice when it comes to um, cutting tools and in addition to that I also add an inexpensive sheathed knife. You can get away with using it in environments like this. It's the summertime in the UK at the moment and I'm from the UK so I, I don't have uh, readily, I'm not readily, uh, I don't have a lot of access to uh, the tropics or coconuts and things like that. But I have been practicing using this a lot on camps that I go on. Not really for clearing areas, but I've been constructing things, I've been cutting wood, and I've been using it as a kind of oversized cooking implement. The beauty of it being, because you can hold it, you know, right down here, you can chop tomatoes with it and um, prepare food and things like that and, and what that's doing is it's given me um, muscle memory of the best way to use this tool um, before I have to use it you know a lot more in a, a more demanding environment.